Hello, welcome to my kitchen chemistry lab where we are going to do a lab out of my full year lab book called The Factors That Affect Solubility. So you may know that sometimes stuff dissolves easily and sometimes it doesn't. And in this lab video, we are going to explore how to get solids to dissolve best in liquids. So I have measured in weigh boats five samples of sugar and they're each two and a half grams. And I did not go to the store to buy sugar cubes, but if you have sugar cubes, one of those would be perfect. If not, you could make a sugar cube. It's kind of hard. Um, it's not that hard. It's kind of annoying. You just have to take two and a half grams of sugar and then kind of make it damp with some water and kind of shape it into a cube. I did it using a small beaker. So mine's going to be circular, not necessarily a cube, but the idea is that you want all of these sugar crystals lumped together. If you're a teacher, it's probably best to just go buy sugar cubes because you'll have one box and that should be enough for like two or three years worth of students. But since I'm just one person doing this experiment one time, um, I have my sugar water mixture here. It didn't solidify as much as I wanted it to. So I'm kind of shaping it here. Um, typically the surface area experiment would be what we do first, but because this isn't quite ready yet, we're gonna save this for the end. I uh, find sugar cubes usually at the bottom shelf they're not that popular anymore. Um, if for whatever reason you can't find sugar cubes, you can kind of make a sugar cube. This is just sugar in water and I've done it with wax paper. This clip is just kind of to hold it together. Um, the water will help all those sugar crystals stick together. The wax paper prevents the sugar from like sticking to your counter or something. And I have kind of shaped it. It's not quite a cube actually, but the idea is that we want the surface area of this to, um, to be all clumped up. That's the idea. If it's, mine is still kind of gooey. I'm going to throw mine in my toaster oven at a very, very, very light temperature just to kind of help dry it up. The water helps those sugar crystals stick together and the wax paper is just here to shape it. So we're going to save this for last. We're going to run through the experiment and this will come through at the end for us. If you're going to try to dry out your sugar cube, you have to make sure that it is a very low temperature because sugar has a very low melting point. So if you um, melt the sugar, it's not going to work very well. So honestly, I would suggest prepping it the day before if possible. So for each of these experiments, we are going to compare just 250 grams, I'm sorry, 2.5 grams of just regular granulated sugar dissolving in 100 milliliters of water. Now, clearly I am not that responsible because I lost my beakers. I don't know what I did with them. So instead we're going to be using my plastic snack cups. Um, this will be just fine because of the color. We'll be able to see how well the sugar is dissolving from the top down instead of through the beaker. Um, so this, this will be just fine. If you don't have any beakers, you could do this just with cups. Um, my suggestion is that they're two cups of the same type because the, um, water is going to be shaped a little bit differently around each of your samples. If you do one in a really tall cup and one in a very wide bowl, um, the amount of water touching the sugar is going to be like a little bit different each time, if that makes sense. So I have two identical cups, although their color is different. That's not an issue. And now we are going to compare some factors that affect solubility. All right, here are our two samples of water. Uh, you may not be able to tell, but this blue one's pretty hot. It has some steam coming off of it. And this is two samples of sugar. They are each two and a half grams. And without stirring or doing anything else, we just want to test how the temperature of the water is going to affect the rate of dissolving for the samples. So they're going to go in at the same time. And we're going to kind of give them a minute and see what happens. My sugar is a little bit on the brown side, but that is because it is cane sugar. It is not actually like brown sugar with molasses. It's just the type of sugar we're working with here. <laughs> All right, without any interventions, um, it is very clear to me that the hot water has dissolved more sugar than the cold water, you can see it's kind of like around the edge on the bottom of heat of this just a little bit. And maybe 
this green wasn't the best color choice, but as far as I'm concerned, there is definitely more sugar in here. Um, I will dump these water samples and try to see how much sugar I can leave on the bottom so we can kind of get a better look. All right, so these are both damp. I've dumped out the water into this beaker here to try to figure out uh, how much sugar was left behind. And in looking at these dried kind of sort of bowls, uh, it's clear to me that the green bowl, which had the cold water, has more sugar, which tells us that uh, hot solvents help to dissolve solid solutes. Next up is agitation. So I'm going to stir the blue sample and the green sample is gonna be the control. I have my two samples of sugar, two and a half grams each, and we are going to sprinkle those in and stir only the blue one and see how the rate of dissolving is different or if it is different at all. Being very careful not to splash this water around. All right, I have stirred only my blue sample for some time and there is maybe a few sugar crystals in here on the bottom, but I'm not seeing very much. But in my green dish, I can still see my sugar, especially along the edge right here. Um, if I were to pour this out, we could definitely see that there's more sugar in here. I mean, in this blue one, there's almost none at all. Looking at the bottom of this green container, I can see that there's still quite a bit of sugar in here. In my blue container, that's not the case. My blue container has just a few sugar crystals. There's really not much in here. Um, so I think it's fair to say that stirring helps solid solutes dissolve. All right, up next we are doing the test for concentration. Um, so in my green bowl, we're gonna dissolve the two and a half grams of sugar, but in the blue bowl, we are going to dissolve 10 grams of sugar. So this is 10, uh, I'm sorry, four times as concentrated once the sugar is added. Um, I shouldn't even say that it's more concentrated because we are anticipating that this is going to be a saturated solution, meaning that we're gonna have solid sitting on the bottom. And this, um, I mean, this green one is also saturated. There's not a lot of water sitting on the bottom here. I mean, there's not as much sugar on the bottom, but there is sugar on the bottom. Um, so our, the samples of water should have the same amount of sugar dissolved theoretically, but this one is having a much harder time dissolving because there's more solid in this sample. Um, the amount of solute that can be dissolved at any um, temperature and volume is going to be the same. This is the same temperature water and the same volume of water. This is just going to have more stuff sitting on the bottom because it's, it's just extra. <laughs> uh, if we heated these up based on our last experiment, this one would probably dissolve. If I stirred it, this one would dissolve. And if I stirred this one, I'm not sure. Um, for the purposes of the lab that's written, obviously this one's having a tougher time dissolving the solute sample. Um, but I will try to stir it just for inquiry and see what happens here. So I'm going to stir this one and just like the one that we stirred earlier, I'm anticipating that this is going to dissolve quite a bit of the sugar because it's the same amount of sugar and the same amount of water as before with the same temperature of water. And just as I suspected, this is dissolving very well. I mean, there's a few sugar crystals in the center there, just like before. And next up, I'm gonna try to stir this. Ooh, it's like chunky and sticky. Well, that sugar on the bottom is wet. This is dissolving, but it is certainly having a tougher time because my sugar is cane sugar, I can see that the water is getting like kind of tan in color. 
because this sugar is tan. Okay, I was certainly able to dissolve more than I thought I would be able to, but at the same time, there's a big spot of sugar stuck at the bottom there in the center. And here, there's just like a few crystals in there. Like, wow, like touching them, it might be like four. Oh, I can actually see them on my finger. There's really like four or five of them. There's not that many. So um, clearly the more concentrated the solution, the, or rather the more solute that is sitting at the bottom, the tougher time the solution is going to have dissolving. So by stirring it, I was able to get this solution to dissolve the whole sample of sugar. But by stirring this, I would say maybe I got 80% of it to dissolve. Um, that's just a guess, obviously. I would have to, like, decant out this um, water here, get down to the dry sample, or the, the dry sample, get down to the solid, dry it out, and then take a measurement. So um, that's just an approximation. But this clearly had a tougher time dissolving than this one. So the more concentrated the solution, or the more solute added, the more difficult it is to dissolve it. Last up, we have my homemade sugar cube versus the um, granulated. So we are going to do that right now. A little bit of the sugar cube got stuck to my fingers. My cube wasn't very cubey. It was kind of a rectangular prism. Okay, my cube shape here has kind of disintegrated. It's bubbling a little bit, and that is just the empty space between the sugar particles, allowing those bubbles to rise out. This will happen with a store-bought sugar cube as well. The store-bought sugar cube is actually really cool. I have some nice pictures I'll overlay right here. Um, but it kind of like disintegrates, it falls over. <laughs> Almost like playing with a sand castle. Okay, so the sugar cube here is like totally flat now. Um, it's clear to me that the sugar cube did not dissolve as well as the granulated sugar. It may be difficult to see on the camera, but I promise this one dissolved better than this one in the same amount of time. We still have air bubbles coming up out of this a little bit, which is indicating that it's still falling apart. So we are going to say that the larger the surface area, i.e. all of my particles spread out versus all of my particles lumped together, this one over here dissolved way better. Thank you for joining me in my kitchen for our chemistry experiment. If you need any materials or need the lab experiment, please look in the video description because I'll have some links down there for you. Um, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the lessons that we use to feel confident in what we're learning here. And I'll see you next time. Bye.